My name is Lolita. I'm an orca. I've been held captive here at the Miami Seaquarium for over 50 years. But it's not a home. It's a prison. And I fear I will never be released. I was born in the mid-1960s. I had a family who loved me and cared for me. They taught me how to dive and find food. We spent most of our time off the coast of Washington State. We swam with a community of several other orcas. This was our pod. We helped each other out. My life was good. Until August 8, 1970. Our pod was out looking for food when suddenly there were loud, scary booms. I looked at my parents and they seemed afraid. They didn't know what was happening. There were noisy, frightening things on the water zooming all around us. Speedboats. It was so loud and disorienting. It was like a nightmare. Then came the nets. They were going after the young orcas like me. Our parents couldn't save us. The speedboats pushed them away. I tried to swim away, but the nets caught me. I was trapped. I couldn't move, and I was so scared. It was chaotic. Eventually, the commotion died down. It looked like they had captured seven of us. But then I also saw dead orcas, four babies, and an adult. I was pulled out of the ocean and put in a container filled with water that was barely bigger than my own body. I spent days trapped there, not knowing what was happening. They were taking me somewhere. I had so many questions. Where was my family? Were they looking for me? Would I ever get to see them again? The place they brought me was the Miami Seaquarium, the place that I would never get to leave. At first I was excited to get out of the cramped container and be able to swim again. But when I finally got out, I found myself in a small tank. And this tank was permanent. When I lived in the ocean, I could swim over a hundred miles some days, and I could dive deep into the sea. But this tank was only as deep as I am long, and not much wider. And it wasn't just for me. It was also for Hugo, another orca. He was captured a couple of years earlier, and we were about the same age. Even though he had been living there for two years, he was just as desperate as me to get out. He explained that I was brought here to perform tricks for humans. If we did the tricks they wanted, they would give us food. Then we'd have to do them in front of big crowds of people. The rest of the time there was nothing to do but float on the water. That's it. No long swims that we craved. No diving. Nothing. Hugo got frustrated a lot. But mostly he was really sad and depressed. And that was a feeling I would become very familiar with. From then on, it was pretty much the way he described. Jumping into the air, balancing trainers on my back, and bouncing beach balls against my nose. I had to do it even though I didn't want to. If I felt sick, tired, scared, sad, I still had to do the tricks. But I always had Hugo. He was suffering too. The captivity was wearing him down. He would bash his head against the wall. The days were bleak, but at least Hugo and I were together. I would try to comfort him when he was feeling down. The trainers wanted us to have babies so that they could amuse even more people. We tried, but it never happened. After 10 years of being together, the pain and stress of captivity became too much for Hugo. He rammed his head into the wall until it killed him. Hugo was the only friend I had in this world, and he was gone. That was 1980, and I haven't had any kind of companionship since. In fact, I haven't gotten to see any other orcas. The Sequarium brought in dolphins to take his place. The dolphins are going through the same hardship I am, but we aren't able to connect in the same way. We're just too different and our differences cause them to hurt me sometimes. Real wounds. But the trainers don't seem to care very much because the dolphins are still in here with me. I'm stuck inside my head, day after day. I daydream about getting to see my family again, being back in the ocean with my pod, swimming a hundred miles in a single day, and diving into the depths of the ocean. 
But those things ended for me over 50 years ago, and I'm still here at the Miami Aquarium. Please don't go to marine parks. If you do, you're supporting the greedy people who have kept me here my entire life. I still dream that someday I'll get to leave, but until then, I can only hope that others won't have to endure the same fate as me. Thank you for watching.